Hello there, and how are you doing today? I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and where are we off to today, you ask? Well, here's a clue. Hanyong Hashipnika. And what does that mean? It is a formal way of saying hello in Korean. And before you come back at me with a torrent of Korean, I have to confess that it is the only Korean that I know. It was taught to me by an old army pal in the Rock Army, Army of the Republic of Korea. Now, how I know someone in the South Korean army is a story for another time, okay? <laughs> so the flight for today is between Seoul RKSS and Pyongyang ZKPY. And it was requested by Captain GL, who also called it a peace flight. Now, given that next week is Christmas, this comes at a good time, I would think. Now, I've flown in and out of Seoul in South Korea a number of times, but never as a pilot. I've never flown into Pyongyang, so this is going to be a first for me. I managed to find some excellent sceneries for this flight. Seoul scenery is by Asian airports, and the one for Pyongyang is by FX Scenery. Both are excellent sceneries. Now I did a bit of research and discovered some interesting facts. One is that the distance between the two airports in a straight line is only 118 statute miles. That's 195 kilometers. And the other thing is that there are no direct connections between Seoul and Pyongyang. Now, if you want to fly, to, you have to fly, first of all, to Shanghai or Beijing and change there for a flight to Pyongyang. <clears throat> and that journey takes more than a day. However, according to the internet, you can take a subway to Incheon Station take a taxi to Incheon International Port and take the ferry to Dangdong. Then take a taxi to Donggang North and from there is a seven hour train ride to Pyongyang. According to what I could find out, this route takes about 28 hours to travel if there are no issues with border crossings. <laughs> If we lived in an ideal world, the road journey between the two points would take less than three hours. But, alas, we do not live in such a world, at least not yet. Now, when I checked with Simbrief and asked for a route, the result was almost as bizarre as you can see here. Look at this. This is quite some detour to make, isn't it? However, Captain GL was quite clear that he wanted to be able to see the North Korean countryside on the flight. So today, Ryanair is going to make a more direct flight between the two points. Now, I'm going to start from stand 202 at Seoul Airport, which is in the international terminal area. At Pyongyang, I'll park at one of the stands right in front of the main terminal building. Which one, I don't know yet, but it depends on what other aircraft are there. For the flight plan, I'll calculate a SID from Seoul and join it up with a star from Pyongyang. 
we'll be flying at a relatively low altitude on our flight route, which of course is likely to make Mr O'Leary quite nervous. As you may remember the flight I did a couple of weeks ago going into Hong Kong. If you remember, I told you about the NOTAMs back in the old 1960s Jefferson charts, about the possibility of being fired upon without warning. <laughs> oh well, time to let the young bold pilot take over. What do you think? Mm. Can he do the job, do you think? Would you fly with him? <laughs> right then, let's go into pre-flight and see what we can do. We will still need a flight plan to calculate fuel, etc. So let's see what we can find out. Here we are in windy.com and I've got RKSS up on the screen here. This is showing Seoul right here. This is the airport. And you can see where the general direction of the wind is coming from at the present moment. So according to this, 23 minutes ago, wind was 330 degrees at 4 knots. Visibility 9,000 meters. No significant clouds, which is good. Temperature is a chilly 3 degrees. Q&H 1031. There's some high pressure in this particular area, but it's not reporting there's going to be any significant change. And here is VFR, which is, of course, what we want. Now, looking at the airport, we are going to be parked up here in this northern terminal area because this is the international area. This part down here is the domestic terminal, according to what I'm able to find out. There are two runways and they parallel each other. And according to this, it's 14 left, 14 right, 32 right and 32 left. The Suggestion seems to be that we may be taking off on this one here, but which direction we're going to be taking off from, we'll have to wait to see what Simbrief uh, reports, and then we'll make a SID, a standard instrument departure, based on that runway. Now, having a look at Pyongyang, well, not surprising. No weather report at all for this station. And here it is, just north of uh, Pyongyang City itself. And the wind seems to be going down from the north to the south. That's the direction. So that suggests we'll be landing on this runway and in that direction. That would then be runway 35. And we will be parking, <laughs> provided we're not shot at and surrounded or whatever, at one of these stands up here, right in front of the main terminal building. All right, let's go into Simbrief and let's see what it comes up with. Airline, we are Ryanair, we are 186, and we are departing from RKSS, and we're going to ZKPY, ZKPY. And there's the alternate, I don't know where that's at. Here's our airframe, which is what Simbrief uses in order to calculate fuel burn, fuel capacity, takeoff speeds, and what fuel we're going to need for the trip. Here's our registration. 
Cruise profile is six. And we're going to be full. We still will have a cargo of champagne and caviar. I'm not sure how we're going to declare that at customs, but we'll do what we can. Now, according to this, we'll be taking off on runway 32 right, which is the one nearest the domestic terminal. Arrival is 35, so we were pretty good on that. Now, looking down here, here is one of the routes that was suggested, and that's this one here. Let's have a look and see what that translates into. Yep. See, here's, here's what it is. It, it goes out, swings all the way over Incheon, all the way over the, the sea, and then back into Pyongyang up here in that, in that direction. And while I'm here, I'm going to have a look. Oh, Shenyang. That's the alternate in China. That's where they've got us going. Should things go pear-shaped? Hmm. Oh, well. But what I want to do is I want to be able to take off from here and go straight up here to come in onto runway 35. Well, if we're going to be flying over the bulk of Korea, and I'm going to try to do this flying direct, then that would be over Kaesong, Pyongsan, and all the way up to Pyongyang that way. I'm going to have to just start from scratch. So I'm going to take all of this and delete it. View more routes. Looking at that one, and that's coming in. That's not bad, actually. This one is coming in from across the north, swinging around, so we should get quite a view of the area. That would seem to be the one that we want. So we'll bring that in, close. So we know what we're going to have for the departure, for the arrival, when we get up there. All right, let's just save this. We'll get ourselves a departure, Sid, when we get into Navigraph charts. But let's save this because we do need to find out about flight altitudes and we need to know how much fuel we need to put on. So I'm going to save the flight and I'm going to generate a flight plan on this. Let's see what it comes up with. Here it is. Well, we're at flight level 240, not bad. Airtime is 40 minutes, block fuel 5,675. According to this, it's the planned optimum flight level. And there is the route. We will be then making a direct flight out. We won't be taking, according to this, we won't be taking a, a SID. But we'll have to see. Here we've got, we are Ryanair 186. Here's our flight level. And that's the information for the routing. We'll need cost index 6. Average wind is right here. Here's the block fuel that we'll need to know. Reserves and the trip and the taxi. No tankering recommended. Well, we'll wonder about that. So we'll go down and uh, have a look. Right here, we'll need to know the descent for flight level 200. 
the direction and the speed of the air. There's 15,000 feet and there is 10,000 feet. Temperatures on the side are very interesting. Minus 30, minus 19, minus 8. This is going to be a cold trip. All right, let's see what we can do about finding out something about the weather. So we'll zoom all the way down here and see what we get for the weather charts. There's a lot of information here. Oh, there we go. Well, actually, there isn't much of anything for weather. So here we do have the wind direction. Oh, and guess what? It looks like we're going to have not only headwinds going all the way in, but we're going to have some strong headwinds. Oh, well, here's our flight uh, altitude right here. As you can see, there's some pretty strong winds there. And here is our route starting out here in Seoul, South Korea, top of climb. And here's the descent all the way into Pyongyang. Here's the troposphere up at just about 36,000 feet. We're not going to be anywhere near that. All right, we've got the information. So let's now go into Navigraph charts and see what we can build for ourselves a little flight plan and put the charts in that we're going to need. Now we're looking at the border between the two Koreas, and you can see it's a very, very wide border, the demilitarized zone there. So go to flights, do new flight from Simbrief, and you will bring in the one that we just made. According to this, we are 32 right, so let's bring in some of the charts that we're going to need. We'll need the airport information. We'll need the parking stand information and we'll need the coordinates. Here's the airport. We'll be up here and we'll be taking off from three to right and then departing in that direction. And we'll be going direct all the way to Sochi, and then we'll be taking this coming in. So let's now go to our arrival. We're going to need the airport information, and we'll need the parking stands. We're coming in on runway 35, so we need to come in on ILS runway 35, so we'll bring that in. Let's have a look at the Ah, here's how it's coming in, right here. Okay, that's, uh, so it looks like it's coming in at PY422, according to this, for the initial fix. Okay, and we'll show the chart, and here it is, there's the Sochi chart, so we'll bring that and pin that. So now that's at the bottom. Going back, we'll go into the approaches. We're coming in on ILS runway 35. If we tap that, then when we bring this up, it should show our route directly in. So there's our final approach for rat landing is going to be 351 degrees. Okay, we have our information. So let's close this. There's our route. Well, it's going to be very interesting. We'll fly as low as we can and try to do as many 
videos en route as I can get. Of course, it all depends on the weather. And since there is a high pressure area in, the air, in this particular region, we may get some pretty clear vision. All right. We've got what we need. Let's go on into the cockpit and get ourselves started. Ah, oh, there you are, Captain GL. Do come in, take your seat. Don't forget, buckle up. And here we are. We're at Seoul Airport. And we're at the North Terminal, the International Terminal. There's the tower over there. And we are at Stand 202. And this is, this is actually a delightful scenery. It's very detailed. They've gone to an awful lot of trouble to put in all of the extra detail of this airport. So I'm very pleased with this. And it's done by Asian Airports. So Asian Airports, thumbs up to you for what you've done here. Right. It's about... 10.30 local time. So we have, oh, and <laughs> we have kamikaze buses and other vehicles roaming around looking for unsuspecting victims. <laughs> we shall have to be careful. Oh, well. Right, then let's get ourselves started. We need to get ourselves started up and get ourselves programmed to make this very historic peace flight that you call it all right battery is on we have enough volts so we'll turn on the fuel pumps and let's get the apu started shall we yes the weather here is high pressure at the moment which is making things nice and clear which is good it's really good for a flight and I do have my phone handy for uh, being tourist. And I'm going to plug that in, although it's, of course, being good and following the instructions, it is, of course, turned on to silent. <laughs> I've also got the fuel put in. That's, uh, that's been put in. We have, I checked all the tires, washed the windows, and uh, everything is set. The door is open and the air stair is down and our passengers will be arriving in just a moment. But now we have APU, the generator is saying that it's ready. So we have 115 volts coming in from the generator. So now I'm going to turn on the IRS, turn on the galley, turn on the emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Uh, should I, shouldn't I? There's the call for the attendants. Let's see if anybody comes and brings us a cuppa. What do you think? Any chance? Probably not. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heats. And I am going to turn on the probes because it is cold outside. It may be clear, but it is cold. And I'm also going to turn on the uh, hydraulic pumps. Now, here's where we get the heat going. Turn on the APU bleed. Turn on the recirculating fans and the packs and... There, you heard the rush of air going through the pipes now to put heat into the main cabin and, as importantly, also in here. And I'm going to put on the steady light down here to let the ground crew know and let these buses know that somebody's in here 
watching them. Ha! All right. We've got everything set up now. We are ready to program the FMC. So here we go. I do a check to make sure that we've got the latest air rack and that it is up to date. Put in the position and we are at RKSS, so RK and SS. I don't know whether 202 will be in it, but let's put it in anyway. Let's see if it comes up. It did. Right, well, let's go into coordinates and see whether or not the 202 matches with what is in there. Well, according to the chart, 202 should be 37338. Yes, and 126476. And that is exactly correct. So I'm going to put that into the temporary and then put it in there. Now, the GPS is set up. Now I'm going to go to root and we are RKSS, so RKSS, and we are going to go to ZKPY, ZK and PY. We are flight number Ryanair 186. If we go down to next page, so we can put in our route, and it's going to be direct to Socha. So, S O C H and A. Activate, and that is it. Now we go to departures. The presumption is that we're going to be departing on a runway 32 right. So let's first of all tune in to ATIS and see what it is. Info International Airport Information Hotel 0138 Zulu Wind Hong Visibility 6 Sky Condition Clear Temperature 4.2.1 Altimeter 1031 Landing and departing Runway 32 right and Runway 32 left. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have hotel. Well, we have hotel, so we're going to request a taxi for departure to the north. Info ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi north. Departure with hotel. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at runway 32 right, using taxiway par par 5 par alpha contact tower on 118.1 when ready. Taxi, hold short runway 32 right, using taxiway par par 5 par alpha, Ryanair 186. Well, we have our information. We're going to be doing 32 right, and we're just going to go straight out, so I'm just going to put that in. The arrival is proposed to be on runway 35, so that's ILS 35, the Socha 21 Alpha, and we're coming in on the transition PY 423. So now we'll go into the plan and have a look at that to see how it looks. So in legs, here we are. Just going through the steps, the Socha coming around, and everything is bringing us in right onto the runway. So, now I'm going to put weather in on here, and over here I'm going to put terrain in. I'm going to turn on the TCAS in case there's any kamikaze aircraft and speaking of which there's one coming right there look at that we shall have to watch out for this chap he's going to pass right in front of us
world travel. Hello. We'll be climbing to 24,000. So I'm going to put 24,000 up here. I'm going to put 24,000 in our pressurization. The elevation at the airport in uh, Pyongyang is 89 feet. So I'm going to put 100 feet in here for the uh, landing altitude. That's just for pressurization. And okay, things are looking good so far. Now I'm going to go to the fix and I'm going to put the fix in. So ZKPY. We'll need a four mile circle. We'll need a 10 mile circle. And we'll need a 30 mile circle. Now we'll go to descent and put in the information for the flight levels. Go to forecast. Transition level, not altitude, but transition level is 130 in North Korea. And we want the altitude and wind for these three levels. Flight level 200, 150, and 100. Q&H at our destination is 1031. High pressure. At flight level 200, it is 34233. At flight level 150, it is 34724. And at 10,000 feet, it is 355 at 17. Good. Execute that. Go to route. Perform initialization. Our fuel will be using reserves of 2993 add that to 2020 for the trip and taxi and that comes to 5013 or near enough five five is the one we want for that the reserve fuel nearest point to that is three we double click this and it will calculate the information. We are cost index 6. Our flight level is 240. Cruise wind that we've been given here is 33129. Transition altitude, not transition level but altitude is 12,000 feet execute that N1 limit will take the 4 degrees cold as it is takeoff will go flaps 10 double click for center of gravity and the trim and here we are with the three figures that we need V1 the rotate and V2 liftoff is 145. So now we're ready to put the information in. First of all, we need to have our departure course. And if we're leaving on 32 right, then that is 323 degrees. So we'll put 323 in here. 323 in the main heading. And can I do yours? Okay. I'll put yours in then too as well. That's 323 on yours. And it's 145 for the map. Push this up, push that up, push that button, push that button, and we have a good flight plan. All right. 
Now I need to put in the localizer that our destination is 109.9. We're doing well. Okay, so far so good. Just making a check, make sure everything is all right. Our decision height is going to be 299. So I'm going to put the, and that will be barometric, 299. At that point, we'll have to either see the runway and be clear to land, or we have to make the go around and execute a missed approach and go to that airport in China. All right, let's get the checklist. Oh, all of our passengers are on board, so bring up the stairs and close the hatch. Everybody's on. And the lights have gone out. That's good. All right, before start, fuel is all checked, windows locked and secured, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, check, MCP is correct, takeoff thrust is correct, takeoff speeds are set, CDU pre-flight is completed, rudder airline trim is in, taxi takeoff briefing, well here, We will need to go back. Unfortunately, we have traffic uh, parked right by the side and they will not depart. So we're going to have to go back, swing our tail to the left and our nose to the right so that we can avoid all the baggage carts. Anti-collision light is now on. Your damper is on and flight continuity light has gone out. We are set. So we're set now to ask the nice people on the ground to push us back so that we can be pointed in the right direction. So go to push back. We need a standard left, turn nose to the right, 90 degrees, select the tug. Right, are you set? Are you ready? We all buckled in. All right, in that case then, attendance, we are going to start to move, so. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Right to that, ready to push, tail to the left, Mark breaks off. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. Which engine would you like to start today, Captain? Number one and number two. One, two. You'd like number two? Okay. Turning off the air conditioning. Brakes released. Here we go. And I'm going to switch this to number two. And now I'm going to turn on engine two to start. And here... We're looking at the EGT rising. And here you can see the N2 is also climbing. Stop valve has opened. We're looking for 24 and then I'm going to introduce the fuel. Getting a nice start up here as you can see and looking for the low oil pressure light to go out which it just did and we're getting a good start so we should hear the engines kick in in just a moment there they are engines have started 
Right, starting engine number one, we have 115 volts showing here on the voltmeters. Star valve light has opened. We can see the N2 climbing. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Push back complete, parking brake please. Parking brake is set. Brake set. And everything is spinning up very nicely. There's a little tick mark here on this. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for a slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you. We'll need to make sure that the tick mark is off on both because that tells us then we have a good power source coming in from each of the, uh, from each of the main engines. Oh, look at that! Ha! Huh. Kamikazes everywhere. Okay, it's stabilizing. When that tick mark goes off. Yeah. Now we know we have good power coming in, so I'm switching now to the generators on the main engines. I'm turning on the left and the right packs, turning off the APU bleed, and turning off the APU. And I'll turn on the strobe lights since we have all these kamikazes and they can't see that we are important. Oh dear. Right, anti-skin is on. So, generators are on, probe heat is on, we don't need the anti-ice yet, isolation valve is correct, start levers idle, detent, flat deck door closed and locked, recall, and check, flaps, we need to go flaps 10, Look at the detail though of this airport. This is really something. This is really something. Uh, flaps are in transit. And we have green lights on the flaps. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake RTO, correct. Speed brake lever down, detent. And ground equipment is clear. I will now verify the takeoff speeds. And we need to make that adjustment. So now we are ready to taxi to the active. Right, I've got the airport map open so you can see where we are here on the north apron. And we need to go all the way down that taxiway to get to the threshold of runway 32 right. Okay, everything is looking good. Turning on the taxi lights. Hold very tight, please. Brake is off. Look around, make sure everything is clear. And now let's have a little bit of power to get ourselves unstuck. And here we go. Oh, there's another world travel. It's gonna beat us to the gate, uh, to the taxiway, I think. But at least we know where we're going. All we have to do is just follow him. Look at the detail of the scenery around as well. The all the buildings.
Well, it is 11 o'clock local time, so we're doing well. terminal over on our left with the South Korea flags flying proudly Airbus A320 
that is here now. I'm going to try to capture as much as I can and show everyone what the North Korean countryside looks like. And it's not particularly remarkable from this altitude, but we shall have to see. Okay. Now for those of you who would like to, they are serving champagne and caviar at the back in the first class cabin. So if you'd like to help yourself to some of that, and I'll let you know as soon as we're on our descent. In the meantime, I'm going to capture as much video as I can so that I can share this with everyone. Okay. to the 
crosswind and then we will be turning downwind base leg and then final on runway 35 that that's the plan over there I've already turned on the descent profile so you can see our profile as we go down engine gas temperatures are running very well everything is running very good fasten seatbelt sign is on and we are coming up in a moment to uh, 10,000 feet and then we'll be putting on the lights um, I've been keeping my eyes open looking on here looking for other aircraft or rockets or whatever so far it has been clear now we're just approaching Sochi and we're about to make our intercept to the crosswind leg at the airport wow this is really
change my plate and get busy here. So departure, arrival. Oh, we're not coming in on one, we're coming in on three five, so we're fine. The one is a military airport. So we're continuing on the one that we've got. We're fine.
will be turning base leg in just a moment.
turn off here. And crew is released to work. Welcome to Pyongyang. I'll just hold here for a moment to get the cleanup done. ready to taxi to a gate this is done by FSX scenery really very very interesting there's a terminal one and there's the main terminals over there see what they've got for parking stands shall we go in? is my best guess. So, stand number three. Pyongyang is what it says. Right, let me get the cleanup done. Stairs down, door open. Galley off. IRS off. Emergency lights off. Window heat off, probes off. Everything is off. Fuel is off. APU is off. Batteries are off. Shutdown is complete. Well, Captain GL, we're here. We made it. Pyongyang. We did not get shot down. We did not get anyone firing on us without warning. We made it. We made a good flight. Now, they did say to land on runway one. That's, that's interesting because, of course, the, we were landing on the proper runway, but the numbers don't match up with the charts that I've got with Jefferson. So... 
that's something for the experts to work out. But we're here, we made it, and I've got lots and lots of footage that I'm going to put out with the video. So I hope that you're pleased with what we did and that this met your expectations. And this is Christmas week. So I'll have a little video later on this week to post just for Christmas itself. But in the meantime, I hope everybody is getting themselves ready in the holiday mood for a very special Christmas. So I'll talk to you all later this week, okay? Thank you for flying Ryanair 186 into Pyongyang. <laughs>